This is Twit. Uh, in 2017, I brought my then 13-year-old daughter to the Women's March in D.C., and I have this very uh, clear memory of her Snapchatting the crowd. She had this huge smile on her face, and all I could think about was that the information that she was giving was in this place, that she was in this place, was going up to the cloud, being saved forever, and I thought, what if someday we lived in a world where this fact could get her in a lot of trouble? But of course, already we live in a world right now where the wrong person knowing your location can be dangerous, and you do not even need to Snapchat a picture of yourself for someone to know where you are. This week, two New York Times reporters revealed their in-depth investigation into location tracking, and one of those reporters is here to tell us about it. Welcome, Jennifer Valentino DeVries, reporter at the New York Times. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you guys so much. So you, uh, you, you just start in the beginning. Where, where did you, um, why did you start to follow this story? Well, I had actually written a, a story about a different location company than um, we were covering in this story. Um, in the spring, I covered a company called Securus that gets data from the uh, cell carriers and uh, location aggregators. And the, so that's the cell network data. And Eventually, it wound up in the hands of law enforcement, and they were using it to track people without warrants. There was a sheriff who had um, tracked a bunch of other uh, law enforcement officers that he had a beef with, and it was a bad scene. So I had written that story, and I started getting tips about um, the location data space and how data like this was being used. And, you know, we just started digging into it further to see what was there. And it turned out a lot was there. <laughs> uh, so like I, everything yeah, was there. Exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, so I heard you talk about this on the, the Daily Podcast, the New York Times podcast. Uh, and you said, you know, you started to ask these companies, you and the other reporter, Natasha Singer, started to ask these companies to tell you more about this and you both got kind of a like don't don't worry your pretty little heads about this it's fine uh, everybody knows about it and so you went online and started looking at some webinars tell us what you found in the webinars well um it's funny because even companies if they're not eager to talk to the press will um they need to talk to clients so i find in a lot of reporting um that looking at marketing materials uh can be helpful for figuring out um what companies are, are doing uh and so they were talking about the power of this location data and how they could pull out um people from the the data and I want to emphasize that they didn't say that they were using anybody's name or anything like that or their phone number. Um, they were pulling out an anonymous person. And what's important to them was not that person's name necessarily, but um, what they were doing in terms of their path through the day. So you could figure out um, what stores they went by. So you might serve an ad to them if you're one of those stores. Um, and you could figure out if they really like coffee shops or if they, they go to a lot of, um, you know, running stores or go uh, to the gym, they might be a health enthusiast and, and things like that. Um, so, you know, these folks were talking about the, the power of their data and sometimes they would candidly discuss, you know, some of the, their privacy concerns that they weren't so willing to, to talk about with us as well. Um, so that turned out to be some fertile ground for, for this reporting. Now, the defense on this often what, what you hear is that, well, the data is anonymized and because it's anonymized, that means that there's no tracking information to know. Like, you know a lot about random person's movements through the world, but you don't know who that random person is. But there are ways to to kind of uh, work through that data and de-anonymize it, right? I mean, I, I don't know who would have access to that data to do that in the first place, but it can be done. Right. I think, um, you know, I don't know that most marketers um, who I think are the, the biggest um, uh, beneficiaries of this data collection, you know, they don't, I don't know that they don't care what my name is, right? And they don't care about me as a person. Um, but I think the danger we showed is that um, if you have data like this, even if it's just associated with a device ID as opposed to a phone number or name or address, you know, you can see um, where somebody lives. Obviously, 
their phone is going to be at their house most of the time at certain hours um, and at their workplace um, if this is a typical person. And, you know, you can identify a lot of people this way. And I think the risk is, um, you know, not that a marketer is going to figure out who you are and track you down and be, um, you know, targeting you and knowing who you are. I think one big risk is that employees at these companies or at the clients that receive the data can look people up. And um, I think that that kind of information sort of um, stalking of ex-boyfriends or ex-girlfriends is a potential problem and people need to be aware of that. And there are also concerns with this information getting hacked. Um, It's not the widespread sort of identity theft concern with some other data. But I think if you have a targeted attack, um, a target that you know might be in a location data set, um, you could try to get access to that and track them. In this data, we were able to find people who were traveling with the mayor of New York City. And this was just a pretty small portion of data that was limited to New York. Um, It's not like we got Washington, D.C. or something, right? So... Um, I think there are a number of risks there that people need to be aware of. Someone in our chat room said, you know, just jokingly, can you believe that they're doing this thing I signed up for? So that's the argument we have here. Like you signed (laughs) up for this, you're using the free service, but uh, you go into the the fact that um, this isn't as transparent as it needs to be. And even if it is, it's still something that we should be concerned about. Right. I think um, that people are aware that their location data is being collected um, in to a degree. Um, you know, they know that you look at a map, you have a blue dot there. It is clear that somebody is getting your location and it has to be sent there. Um, and some of them even know that uh, they're that this is being used for advertising. It's unclear to them how widely it's being spread, how many companies are involved and how long the the data are stored. Um, And, you know, I think that what we were looking at um, in some of our testing were the pop-ups that come up when people agree to provide their location. Um, and in iOS, you know, this is mandated um, by Apple. In Android, it's not. You just have to um, ask for permission to use location. Um, but we found a number of uh apps that were putting these screens in um, aside from that pop-up. And what those pop-ups are doing are often only mentioning the uses that are like, you're going to get weather alerts or you're going to be able to track your runs or you're going to get traffic updates. Um, So please enable your location all the time. And they don't add, and we're going to use it for advertising and we're going to store it and we're going to use it to Um, sell to hedge funds so they can store it and analyze it. And, you know, there are some, we actually did see um, some apps that had that kind of information in there. So it's, it fits, it fits in that prompt. And so, you know, if everybody, if these companies were so proud of it and thought that users were super into doing this and knew what was going on, why would they not put that in the prompt when it fits? Yeah, and if the, and if there are some apps that are doing that, I wonder, I wonder how often that expanded prompt that actually gives that information really makes a lick of difference, anyways. Because I think I mo- most people are just kind of like, yeah, well, okay, great, thanks for the warning. Right. Let's let's just continue right. on to the free thing. Here's all right. my data. <laughs> right. No, and I think that's true. I think people um, don't realize, uh, even if they were to get something like that. Um, what that data means. There's kind of an information asymmetry here um, uh, in which consumers don't conceptualize of how long it will be stored and how it can be put together to reveal things. Um, But I do think at least telling people in a prompt that there are these other uses besides um, the really obvious ones like tracking you at this moment to do this thing asking me to do. Mm -hmm. I think that would be helpful. Sure. 
Well, so there's also, there's three levels of data that, you know, we're giving people or, or many, there's many ways we can give people. But I think about, you know, there are people out there who will be surprised if you say, you know, when you post on Facebook or Instagram, that information is used to sell ads. And then that's surprising to some people. And there are other people that, you know, but because that's a certain kind of information that you put out to the world. It's like, you know, your, your social media is maybe not who you really are. And then there's like your Google searches, which are a little bit different. Like you might say like, you know, how do I get rid of hemorrhoids or something? something. And, you know, it's like, that's a little more private, but this location data is something you might not even type into a search engine. And, and there's, I mean, that's the thing that really is shocking. Like you talk to people who, um, you know, there was one woman who spent the night at her ex-boyfriend's house. And when you talked to her and you were, you know, she gave you permission to look at that. Like, she, you know, she said that she felt ashamed about that. You know, it's just like the fact that they're selling things on the backs of this private information. That that's what I think is upsetting. Yeah. I think, um, there was another, we talked to several consumers um, for this story. They don't, you know, not everything makes it in. Um, but there was another woman I spoke with who let us look at her data who had, in fact, tried to go through her phone. She's not even on Facebook. Um, she uh, had tried to select apps that didn't tell her in these prompts that they were um, using her information for anything else, she said. Um and she didn't have as many apps with location enabled on her phone and she was still in the data. Um, and, you know, other people, other consumers I've talked with, you know, you ask them to go in and, and look at their phone's location settings and tech savvy people um, might check those things frequently, but I think most other people don't. I mean, a lot of people would have things in there, like maybe they got some kind of map um, for the metro for a city they went to a year ago, and it's still allowing location in their phone, like to, to be collected from their phone, and it's always on. And I know that sounds really stupid to um, people who understand technology, and I'm, I'm guessing to all of your listeners, but these weren't, you know, uneducated people. Um, they just aren't steeped in technology. Um, and you know, it's something that is easy to forget about when you have a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah, especially because you, you pointed out in your article, in, in one case, uh, someone's location was be tra being tracked 14,000 times in a single day, which isn't just intrusive, doesn't feel in, only intrusive to be tracked 14,000 times a day and as far as where you are, but uh, it also it could have a detrimental effect on on the technology that you own and that you buy and slowing things down and making your life kind of miserable right. in some I, minute sort of way, you know, on your phone. Well, I've got to imagine it's killing the battery. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, but I think, I think the people who were tracked that frequently, um, phones, uh, they'll send more updates if you're moving, um, quickly. That's true. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah. And, uh, I think those are probably, you know, cab drivers and, and folks who are really driving around, um, for work, like delivery people, something like that. Um, and so I was just, my thought was, man, I hope their phone is plugged in. <laughs> it makes it six hours because, a day. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like, they must be super frustrated. <laughs> what is happening? So, yeah. <laughs> so you spoke to some of the, the you, you spoke to many of the people that work in these companies. One that this quote just amazed me, the, there was a, um, the Tell All Digital is a Long Island advertising firm that's a client of a location company. And he just, he even describes it as living in 1984. So, so I mean, it's just, is this just sort of where we are now? Just, should we just accept this? Um, you know, I think that, my role is to make sure that people understand what is happening, um, even if they aren't um, technologists, if they're just, um, you know, people who are interested in this and educated, but not um, perhaps people who have this as their job. Um, and so I don't really know whether we should accept this or not, but I think that right now there's not an understanding such that people can make a decision about, um, an informed decision about whether they're accepting it. Um, and I think that it's something we need to be aware of, even if right now the data 
is only being used to serve you ads as um, the collection of data increases um, with the Internet of Things and just the the spread of um, different types of technology that can kind of create this data exhaust, um, I think it probably becomes more enticing to governments and other entities that, um, you know, might find other uses for it. And so I think we need to be aware of it so that that is not, so we don't just get to a point where we don't learn about this and um, debate it as a society until all of a sudden uh, it's completely out of control. So I think there's still a point that, um, you know, we're at a point where it's not, um, this isn't the full extent of, data collection so i wouldn't give up on questioning it yeah i love the term data exhaust i've never heard that so it's a great gives a like i real physical <laughs> 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 exactly. uh, and so check out uh jennifer's piece in the new york times and also she links to tips on how to stop these companies from uh from tracking you and if you think you know everything check it out anyway or send it to someone who might not know because they're they're excellent tips uh jennifer valentino de Vries is a technology reporter at the New York Times. You can follow her on Twitter at Jen Valentino and you can send her confidential news tips at nytimes.com slash tips. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Ray. Thank Appreciate you both. It.